one of the things you're going to see the implications of uh, down the road, that tax bill, uh, number one, we took, it's, it was $1.5 trillion more in debt, $2.3 trillion to pay it back with financing and things. Our national deficit uh, is a $20 trillion plus. This is about a tenth of our whole national debt with a blink of an eye. And the concept behind it was we're supposed, this will pay for itself. Well, it didn't pay for itself in the previous attempts to do this. And already in the Trump budget, there's an acknowledgement that it won't pay for itself because they're already budgeting money that, that's there to pay for what they said the bill was going to pay for itself. So when you drill down to that budget, you're going to find out that money uh, is money that plunges us even deeper in debt dramatically. And what's the effect going to be on everyone here? Well, uh, it's going to have a dramatic effect when the economy trails down and the cycle of recession goes. Because what we're seeing with the interest rates starting to climb, partially as a result of this, and what we're seeing with our ability, there's no tools when that recession hits to make that curve go smoothly like this. It's going to go down and be hard, and it's going to be hard to come back. We don't see it now. Every economist uh, worth their salt is telling us that. It's going to have that effect. We're looking at the devastation here and how the Commonwealth is working to cope with uh, infrastructure needs. Well, there's no infrastructure bill. That $200 billion is woefully, it's not the trillion that we talked about, the President talked about, and it's certainly not the six trillion that people in the uh, engineers are saying we need. It's 200 billion, it's really not 200 billion. It's there as leveraged money, private side money and other money that frankly will do nothing. And the communities and the states that are sitting there grappling to just try and get a balanced budget, they're not going to leverage all that money to get that back. Uh, and so our infrastructure goes, again, being ignored, which is one of the most important economic issues that takes effect because you know, if the states don't have some money to help from the federal side, they're not going to be able to do the job that has to be done. Uh, the healthcare side of that is dramatic. Uh, what's occurred because of that tax bill will be, and it's intended uh, with many people, I'll give it to you straight, uh, it's intended to affect those that believe, and they are, and they exist, there's a different world here in Massachusetts. <laughs> they want to uh, cut Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. That's their goal. And if you look at the budget that passed the House that is going nowhere in the Senate, it says that. Uh, they're setting up uh, a, co a competing system for Medicare, uh, they're sitting there for uh, block grants for Medicaid that'll give people like our legislators here, they'll say, oh, well, you have more flexibility to choose with less money. And, and we've got a successful system here in Massachusetts, one of the best in the country, that was put together with bipartisan support and a 2.5% un un uninsured rate. Instead of moving in the direction of the success of Massachusetts, it's pulling apart the ability to do that here in this state, and it's making it worse in the rest of the country.